Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. So as you can see, I've just got the 6R on the dump trailer and we've just pulled it down to this building here because we had some ewes in here, some of the in-lamb ewes and we were lambing them in the shed. So we're just gonna clean these out today. I've, I've just put the muck into a pile with the manor too. And recently we've had some fantastic weather. It's so sunny at the moment, so dry um, here on the farm. But unfortunately, um, the crops are starting to wilt a little bit in places with our spring barley. So we do need the rain and we could also do with some Good, good bit of irrigation which we might put on the barley quite soon if it's if it's worth sort of 300 pound a ton so um it's looking to be a good year for the crop prices but also quite risky at the moment as well so and i mean everything is just getting so expensive at the moment i mean just to buy a bag of fertilizer is nearly like 900 pounds a ton um, to pay the contractors is getting more and more expensive. Uh, the other day I, I was doing a deal with a company um, to fatten some animals. It, in the end we just said, just about, basically just said like, we couldn't do it because um, we just can't grow the grass this year to keep the animals. So we'd rather have a lower stocking density and be able to feed everything than a high stocking density and not be able to feed everything and be worried about fertilizer costs. And also, I mean, I don't know whether it is climate change or not, but the, the years here are certainly getting a lot drier on this farm so it's very difficult really to predict what the future has in store for farming in the UK I think like a lot of things you've just got to remain positive and uh, that's that's something I try and do with the videos and uh, yeah just keep going really I think sheep and cattle will be quite good we're going to increase our sheep numbers next year we're going to have another 30 ewes which will be quite good um, so that's something I'm really looking forward to and then we've also got some more calves on the way, some Hereford crosses, which I might keep as heifers, so it's actually not looking too bad, um, livestock wise, but we just can't, you, I think it's just difficult at the moment to do more intensive jobs, like fattening animals and things like that, so we, we will just keep our ewes, ewes going and keep the heifers going on our, in our suckle herd. a good session on the weed wiper applying a herbicide called Pastor to eliminate a lot of the broadleaf weeds and I've upped the rate on it the dosage a little bit and it's doing a really good job we've just managed to get on top of all of those broadleaf weeds it's doing an absolutely fantastic job because the weather's been so dry and we've had plenty of wind free days it's been quite still we've been able to get on and do that job at least but for the crops they are starting to begin to suffer a little bit and then something else as well was the um, Massey Ferguson 135 which a lot of you guys like that's uh, currently being paid, painted at the moment we've got some pictures of the chassis which is just being stripped down it's just been primed so it's just about to have its last layer of coat on I think for the, for the chassis and then the firm at Young's Agricultural will start doing the cosmetic work which is to do with the body panels, the bonnet and all of the details which you don't really think about they, they're going to get to work on and, and that's the sort of part of the process which can, can take quite a while so we're not going to go and see that tractor until it's finished we're planning on taking it to the Norfolk show uh, 2022 the, on the 29th and the 30th of June that tractor will be there fully restored for, for a reveal um, on the first day at around about 10 o'clock we're going to re reveal it so if you're going to the Norfolk show try and go on the 29th of June, the first day, and you'll see the 135 being revealed on our stand in collaboration with the Norfolk Food and Farming Trust and also Cramp UK and Cherry Products and Young's Agricultural. So that will be a really good, a good few days, hopefully, over at that show. I've been going to that show since I was like this high and uh, it's a really good worthwhile country show if you enjoy you know tractors combines cheap cattle all that good stuff it's always been a good farming show so do come along down to the norfolk show 2022 and then today we're just talking about doing a new 
project for next year, which is once the 135 has been done, we're going to do one for 2023. And um, I've, I've been thinking about a small John Deere for a while, either a 6410 or maybe a later 6430. But I've got to make my mind up by June um, and decide whether that's the next tractor which I want to restore. Because the next restoration, I, I want it to be a tractor which we can use on the farm um, and something which will come in handy um, rather than something to be a museum piece, if that makes sense. So it's nice to use tractors. Um, the, the 135 will probably be more of a museum piece because I, I mean, there's just been so much time and effort put into that tractor this last year that uh, I, I just don't want to wreck it. You know, it needs to be looked after that one. So that, that, will, that will be probably more of a museum piece, that tractor. Um, but all the other ones, the restorations, I would like to actually use them. So we'll probably try and use this little John Deere if all goes well. The 65 as well, I mean that could be a tractor to be done up, but to be fair, I like that tractor in original condition just as it is. So we'll probably leave the 65 and just do any mechanical work on that one. Sometimes it's quite nice just to leave a tractor in its original clothing but have all the mechanical parts done um, rather than put all the paint and all the razzmatazz on it um, as, as a project if that makes sense. So it might be a mechanical restoration we do, I don't know, but just leave a comment in the comment section down below what sort of tractor you'd like to see us buy next. Um, it will be in working clothes and um, probably an old banger tractor, a proper heap, and then we'll we'll do it up and, and make it like new for the next year. So um, leave a comment in the comment section down below. Another reason why we're thinking about just doing the restoration project is because when you try and buy um, a, lot, a lot of these new tractors or new equipment, the lead time is so many years. I rang up yesterday about the new Defender, about the commercial, I spoke to the local dealer, and they said it would be about two to three years um, before you'd actually get a new shaped Defender, which is crazy. So you can understand why second-hand prices are going up for everything at the moment, tractors and forklifts and 4x4s four four and things like that. So you kind of, the second-hand market is booming, but a lot of second-hand tractors and equipment are generally uh, in poor condition, so you've got to do them up. So I think there'll be a lot more restoration projects coming in the future, not just from our farm, from lots of different farms. People will buy secondhand, do it up, and use it as their main tractor or the main piece of equipment, you know. And one piece of equipment I was really happy we managed to buy just sort of before COVID was the Tanko bale wrapper, because that piece of equipment is literally built like a tank, and I'm sure that will last years and years if it's looked after. So I'll get that out next week, because we're starting to do the silage quite soon, and uh, I'll need to make sure that that's all working and up and running. I've kept the control box separate. I've had that in, inside my house over winter to try and keep it warm. Um, so with some of these things, if you leave them in, you know, if you leave them outdoors, the frost will get to them and then it will damage all the electrics. So we'll try and keep that, uh, all the control boxes indoors if we can in winter. The GPS dome on the John Deere, I, need, I, I keep forgetting, but I need to remember to take that inside. And I hope everyone had a good time at Llama this year, which is at the Birmingham Many C. Um, I did go along to it and I didn't film anything hardly because there was just so many people there. And it was so nice to meet so many of you at the show. But... So handy this muck crab, I've had it for about a year now. up the hill there. Just on the way back from tipping that load there, if you just have a look in that field stack yard, those potatoes have just started to come up. Now hopefully they're going to go, I believe, to the co-op or McDonald's, the company were telling me. Um, one thing that they do need, of course, this time of the year, is a good bit of water. So I'm sure the irrigation will go on those fairly soon. I mean, that's the trouble in the eastern counties with light land and, and root crops like that. You do need a good bit of water on them to make them grow and to get a good yield. So it'll be nice to see the irrigator out soon. Um, we have been talking about 
in the future you, using our own machines to do some irrigation. Um, you need to get the right equipment though, you've got to change your wheels. Um, so I need some narrow wheels on the 6R to do it. Um, but that's all, all a possibility in the future really, to do a bit of irrigation work. Right, we'll clean the rest of that shed out this afternoon by hand. Uh, another little project I've got at the moment is cleaning out this shed here. This is our grain store. We'll soon have our spring barley in here. Uh, and also, it's been proven to be quite a good shed, this one, for working on equipment. So I've got a little area there I've just made clear now, um, just by my bike. And I'm planning on just putting some tools on a trolley and having some portable tools in this part of the shed where we can work on equipment. It's, uh, it used to be a potato store actually, but now it's, um, we use it for grain and we also use it for sawing some equipment in here. Um, but the idea is that for the next restoration project, uh, for 2023, we could work on it indoors in the winter, um, go out, feed the cattle, make sure everything's okay, and then work on our classic tractor in the win winter months. That's the idea anyway, um, in partnership with Cramp. So yeah, let, leave a comment in the comment section what sort of tractor you'd like to see for 2023. Um, something realistic and something which isn't going to cost the earth, just a, a cheap tractor to do up and hopefully it'll be a good year. So um, thanks very much for watching this today's video. I hope you're enjoying the sun, whatever you're up to. Um, it is of course great for the animals and great for the livestock, a good bit of sun on their backs, especially if you've got things like ringworm and lice, um, it will help eliminate problems like that. Um, and also it is good for getting the grass growing, but we do need a bit of rain. Stay positive and all that good stuff uh, and I will catch you on the next one. Click here to subscribe to the channel and click here to watch another Ollie's Farm video.